Hey guys, welcome to my first video, uh, first commentary, kind of. Uh, this is my first serious commentary, basically. I'm doing the YOLO strats loadout by the Russian Badger. Um, now I'm following this exactly. I've got my backpack here that can carry 31 people. The side pouch to carry all the spectators. Got the 870. Uh, we've got, uh, have hollow, hollow sight and buckshot. For the shorty 12G and the M26. Now, um, I'm gonna be playing Domination because I was thinking about doing TDM on Locker, but, um, that tends to end up in a lot of stalemates, I guess you could call them, really, when everyone's just shooting at each other and no one's moving anywhere. And the, r the range of those little stalemates on Locker is just the perfect range where shotguns are ineffective, with buckshot at least. And so I just decided that domination on a map like this is generally better. Now if you don't know what YOLO strats is, uh, you have three shotguns, and you get a kill with the first, you switch over to the next, you get a kill with that, switch over to the third, and then you go back to the first. Um, the only exception here is, two exceptions rather, like what I just did there, you get a kill with one, you can take all the time you want to reload it, as long as the next kill is with the other shotgun. Now, another exception, which somewhat contradicts what I just said, is that if there are several guys, like, in a room, then you can use the same shotgun to kill them all, just because... Let's say there's four guys in the room, and they, they're all using automatic weapons, and they're all looking at you. you you're you just not going to be able to kill all four of them, switching your shotguns. Maybe, if you've got like a QBS and you place your shots well, you'll be able to kill them. But, it's hard enough as it is to kill them with one shot. And look at this guy, not knowing how to use the XM25. He's just firing 10 feet in front of me. And no, man, that, that's not how you use it. So, I'm running around here trying to pick up kills with this thing. It's a really fun class. If you're ever bored with Battlefield, which it does tend to get kind of boring, <coughs> this is a really fun class to use. Um, like, I'm level 107 right now, I think. I think I was 106 when I started playing this round, but whatever. I'm high level. I play the game way too much. And it gets boring at times. And this is a really fun way of uh, spicing it up. So, get this guy, and I kill, kill the second, you know, still with the 870. And then I'll switch to the shorty. Take that guy out. And I'll take my time to reload, of course. And I don't know if it's in this video or another one, but I tried reloading the shorty and I just got destroyed. This, I, al I always pick the wrong times to engage animation like reloading every time I, I think oh you know I'll reload now it's safe I die if I ever try to jump over a barrier or throw down a health kit it's always just the most inopportune time to do that um but yeah aside from that it's it's a really good class I think um I don't know if in this video no I don't but Using slugs really does help for these like long range engagements. I'm planning on doing a video on the Saiga 12 with slugs. That's actually ridiculously effective using that. Like you can get 150, 200 meter kills using those rounds. Or using those shells, whatever. But I didn't do it in this video. And right there is me trying to use the explosion from grenade as cover and I ran before it exploded and I also threw it way too far so that was just a failure in general now here is where things get interesting there's that guy flawless YOLO strats transition to the next weapon reload switch to the M26 and take that guy out and I think that qualifies you know group of people 
I'm not sure why I switched back to the shorty. I don't think it really matters. As long as you switch weapons. Um, but the general idea is... Yeah, I did break the rules there, sorry. But the general idea is... Switch. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Not 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. I don't know how I got that guy. Battlefield hitboxes are just bad. But, um... Yeah, and then that... In my head, I was thinking, do I kill him with the 870 and take all the crap from anyone watching this? Oh, you broke the rules again, man. Or do I switch to the, sh to the shorty? So I go with the ladder, and the shorty is out of ammo, and I die. And, you know, my, my quick situation thinking was, oh, I'll just reload it, because that'll work, instead of switching to the M26, which I had a better shot at surviving, provided I'd done that. But, and here's where things get a little bit salty. There I almost just get blown to bits by a rocket and somehow survive. And, um, this becomes one of those situations where it could be really profitable. I could get a lot of kills, but I don't, largely because this guy on my left took them all. But also because... I've just got the wrong weapons at the wrong time, like, in a moment I'll move up here to try and engage these guys, and, like, I'll have a lot of opportunities. If I were using, let's say, the, M the M4 carbine, which is the best weapon I have on my stats list, I've got 14 or 1500 kills with it, and I'm more comfortable with that than everything, but really any automatic weapon I can take all these guys out with no problem. But they're at the perfect distances where it's hard to get the spread of the buckshot to line up properly. And so, um, you know, what else to do other than throw grenades in. But I do pick up one kill. Yeah, yeah right there. And I thought that was a guy, but it was a Soflam. And now, this dude, I don't know if it's the same guy or if it's several guys on the staircase, but... That guy kept popping up and it was really pissing me off, but I eventually kill him. And what I ended up doing was just standing here, waiting for one of these guys to get revived. Like, I wanted that to happen so bad. I do get Carl over there and then I believe someone comes up onto the staircase. And there I'm just camping that guy, hoping some medic will run around the corner and revive him so I can get more triples and get blown up by guy with zero health um I've been seeing the zero health thing a lot less frequently lately I think they did patch that um and that guy was dead so I guess technically he did have zero health but dice did do a they did a pretty good job patching that along with those glitches people gave them a lot of shit for that too like on their Facebook page I feel bad for them man people just it's just this torrent of people calling DICE this horrible company that doesn't care about its players and doesn't release updates. And people just, like, DICE will have the Player Appreciation Month, and there'll just be a bunch of assholes complaining, Oh, fix the game, assholes. Um, and it's like, it's, it's not like DICE is sitting there, Oh, you know, we could fix the game, or we could sit here and just farm money by releasing DLC too early. Which isn't DICE's fault, that's all EA. Um, like, the first thing is that releasing updates is not just something you decide to do. It's not easy. You don't just decide to fix the game. It's just something that takes a while to do, and, you know, it takes money and time and manpower to fix, to just, you can't just fix a game is what I'm saying. They're not just ignoring people's requests. And then the other thing is that it's not DICE that released an unfinished game or releases too much DLC. That's all EA. EA is a piece of shit. Let me just make that clear. But EA is the one that made them release the game when they did. EA is the one that makes them release, you know, they're the one that makes them release Naval Strike before Second Assault is even out for normal players. Like right now you can only get Second Assault for the Premium Princess and you can't buy it yet. And they're already like pushing Naval Strike. And, but that's not DICE's fault, that's all EA. I think people give DICE just 
they give them way too much crap for what they do. They're game developers. They don't sell anything. All the marketing is up to EA. And that's largely why I'm not pre-ordering Titanfall, because I pre-ordered Battlefield. And like, I didn't have as much problem with it as some people did, but I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was pretty bad the, the first release. Like, a game in a beta should not have been that bad, let alone the final release having that many glitches. But, like, I do like dice games, whatever things EA publishers are good, but Battlefield should have been good. It should have been this good when it was released. And that's why I'm not pre-ordering Titanfall. One, because I don't have any money, but two, because I'm afraid I'm just going to get this half, half-developed game. And I'm not blaming the developers, it's EA's fault for that. Um, so if you're one of those people that's on Dice's Facebook page, yelling at them and insulting them because they don't care about their players, just realize that it's not their fault. Go on the EA Facebook page. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any loadouts you want to see me play or class setups, just comment them down below. If you've got a silly class you want to see me do, or if you have a class that you use that you want to see how bad I do with, or how bad I do with, um, just leave it in the description. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to do a, a video on it of me playing. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.